everyone, welcome to the Lightworker series where I am introducing Chandra Heyer today and we get to hear from her and she's going to teach us and a little bit about what it is that she does, how she is the light, how she teaches others to be the light, how she uses her work to serve being a light worker. So thank you so much, Chandra, for being with me today. Happy to have you. Thank you so much, Eileen. It's a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much for opening up that space, for, for really bringing in all the light workers together so that we can help awaken and enlighten everybody else up on the planet, so that we can create more consciousness. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely, Shonda. Thank you. Yes, when I thought of putting together the light worker series, more than anything, I wanted to introduce the term and the, and the topic of what is a light worker and to be able to show everybody how. I do light work, you do light work, but we all do light work in different, different ways and in different areas of our lives. So it's more about opening and expanding the thought that through our light, we get to create beautiful manifestations and that we get to decide that we don't have to and don't want to live in the darkness anymore or in that lower consciousness of energy. Mm -hmm. So describe for our viewers today, Chandra, I know that they're, um, very much wanting to hear from you what it is that you do how you serve and how you do that from the standpoint of being a light worker um i'm a medicine woman i've been working with sacred plants for 10 years at the moment i'm working with combo which is a frog quote-unquote poison Mm -hmm. um, but it's just in the sense that like uh, a vaccine if you could say it's a it's a natural vaccine from okay from the poison off of the frog and in this way it helps to really cleanse and detoxify the body but because we're not just physical beings we're physical energetical and etherical it cleanses on all levels so i combine this work with um also energy work and i, I work with the with the rays of light um so it's kind of like the work is it's very if I could say, because I, I know I'm a, I'm a star seed, but I'm also here very, very um, anchored here in the, in the earth and have been like actually a medicine man in many previous lives. So it's like bringing that energy from the earth and from the stars where it comes into a point and then at the center, it's like, and it becomes the Christic energy. And this, if you're talking about light, it's sort of like the frequency or the color is very golden. And for me, I feel it is very golden white. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just like dive straight in at first. <laughs> so I work with combo and also uh, medicine that I make changa. It's DMT mixed with 23 different plants. I don't know if that's legal for me to say here. <laughs> okay, everything um, is good. And I also do energy work and energy clearing. Uh, so to answer your question of like how how I work with light. Is, is, is that your question? Yeah. I, mean, I, think, I don't want people to get up caught up in uh, this sort of dualistic, like light and dark. Yes, there is very much a part of the world that is very high vibration, low vibration energies, and we need to be very aware of the low vibrational energies. They can also be very tricky. Um, but you know, to not make it be too unattainable for people of like being a light worker. Oh, it's like such a huge thing. Yes. You, you can be a light worker in the most simple, the most simple things are the most profound, you know? If, so for me, I, I, I want to always try and be um, accessible to people so that it doesn't get to spirituality, you know? Yes. So that it can, it, people can really relate to it. So in this sense, to, if I can try and simplify it, because it can get very complex, um, just, you, you know, you could, you could start being a light worker just by, by really holding that energy in your heart of, of pure love, of taking accountability and responsibility first for yourself. And then if you can outreach that to your, to your neighbors, your friends, your family, your community, this is light working. And, and, the, the information that you share and you go through, if you can help that um, somebody else speed through their process quicker for something that's happened, you know, for, for you as a tool. If we can keep sharing these these tools and ways of just raising the frequency, other ways are like really simple: praying, 
and just visualizing that light you can feel if you go into the sun and just whether it's sun gazing or just lying in the sun if you're on the beach really feeling because there's coding in the sun there's information in the sun mm -hmm. and these energies get trans like transmitted into into the planet and onto the planet and we are crystalline beings walking on the planet you know we're transmitters for the planet right. um, so if if we can feel the energy from the sun and just surrender and, and trust and really feel that permeating through our body and then also because we are the transmitters for the earth feeling that going into the earth also right so i suppose that could maybe be from simple yeah. to complex <laughs> That's perfect. It's so interesting, Chandra, because again, everything that you're talking about being in the, I mean, for me, it's the, the Christ consciousness, the golden consciousness. When I'm, I'm helping people heal through meditation, they're connecting to the golden light, the golden ray. So it's so powerful how we're all doing something very similar in different ways. But bottom line is what we're telling all the viewers is the importance between being in the higher consciousness and the higher vibration versus the lower consciousness and lower vibration. Yes. So another way in psychology, for example, when I um, am speaking with clients uh, from a therapeutic standpoint, for me, it's you've got the ego, right? You've got that voice that is telling you everything that you can't do and why you can't do it. And then we've got the light and we've got that, that power within us of reminding us, yes, you can, of course you can, you deserve this, you belong here. What you're going through is not good enough and you've got to find the light and you've got to find your way out. And so I love the way that you are putting this program together and, and, and teaching from that space or the program that you have created from aligning all of this for people, but actually helping them to heal. And so if somebody was to come to you, Chandra, uh, like what, what is your typical client? What are they looking for? Why would they find you? So, um, because I'm a star seed and the specific journey that I've been through in my life, it's amazing how, how clients show up. They will either yes. consciously or unconsciously know that they're a star seed or that, that like that's been so repressed within them and I say it and they just start crying. They're like, how did you know? And I'm like, cause we're like, we're resonating with each other. We're collecting our, our reconnecting our giant family of light. So that, cause we're all here on this mission together to raise the frequency on the planet. Yes. So it's yes. usually star seeds, um, whether they're conscious or unconscious of it. And also people who, yeah, who are my beautiful mirrors that I get to help trans transform what they're, they're going through, you know, whether it be from like, I came from a background of sexual abuse and then also throughout my lifetime, like verbal, like verbal abuse, um, narcissistic relationships with men. Yes. Like Isn't all it? this, I know. Right. And it's, it's a collective yes. feminine, um, energy. I think as we come in as, as feminine, we choose on a collective level to go through this so that we can learn so that we can begin to start balancing the energies of the masculine and feminine so yes. that the feminine is not, doing it again because we used to do it to them <laughs> for eons ago. So it's yeah. typically like um, mostly women. That was never something that I set out, but it's just mm -hmm. women, women resonate with me. Um, right. It's mostly, yeah, it's mostly women and women who have gone through similar issues, whether it be like solar plexus issues of like standing in their strength and their power and saying no self love, all of these things that like were super challenging for me in, in my life, but now it makes it all worthwhile because I get to share what I went through to be able to help somebody else. And that, that in its greatest form is, is light working, you know, so we can all do that. Whatever challenges anybody else has been through, you can use that to help somebody else. And it serves, then it serves a greater purpose. Yes. It's so amazing because I attracted, obviously we attracted each other, right? To even be on the show and for you to be able to say this and it's, it's so powerful. And again, for the viewers to understand that that's just the way that it works. We don't, it's effortless. It was something that we were looking for people that are pretty much doing the same type of work, but not knowing that you're calling yourself a star seed or that, you know, I come from the same background. I help women with trauma 
I work, I do hypnosis and regressions to help with past life experiences and, wow. and soulmate connections here. So it's, you're, you're talking, it's like, wow, like, look what we connect and look what we're doing. And now we're, we're using this program to share this around the world because we get to use social media and, and the web to be able to get people from all over the world to connect to this information so that we are helping the collective and we are helping women again to connect to and heal their feminine and their masculine side and i think that for a lot of us we felt that we had to be in the masculine for so long just to prove that we had to be strong and but we lost ourselves in that space and so I love the work that you're doing, Chandra. I love how transparent and how open you are with the terms. And, and that's beautiful because, again, one of the things, one of the issues that we have is that everything has to be masked somehow. And the fact that you're so open and, and available to be able to talk this way for our listeners and for your clients is magical because so many times we're right we go to a doctor and they're not even taking into consideration energy or energy healing or what's your vibration doing or the environment in your home what what kind of environment are you in do you have a sanctuary in your home somewhere and of course all of that toxicity is making people sick so when you're doing the so how long is your program what do you do when somebody is working with you Talk to us about your program, your technique. So if someone came to me, I would take a consultation. Consultations are extremely important. Um, mm -hmm. It's just mind blowing to me that some people who are combo, like combo practitioners don't even take a consultation. It's like, you know, they would open up the space wow. and just be like, okay, come and serve with, you know, come and sit with combo. Combo is a very serious medicine. You need to know what kinds of um, medications have contraindications. So people wow. come to me with like very serious illnesses and in a way wow. I'm like a plant medicine spiritual doctor. And that's like, that's to the degree that I, that I uphold and, and really hold it sacred. Right. It's quite an, it's quite an in-depth um, consultation so that I understand because a lot of times the physical illness is not the root. So I have to try and figure out right. in consultation how to unravel it to the very beginning of the root. So mm -hmm. it's quite, um, and from, from all levels, you know, like physical, energetical, emotional. So it's quite an in-depth consultation. And then <clears throat> um, combo is recommended to do three times within a lunar cycle. And in this, so it's in this way so that you can really, we're like layers of an onion. If you can only, only imagine, like I'm, I'm 40 years old. I've had I've 40 years accumulating, accumulating, accumulating all this programming, um, like lineage, lineage things come through your lineage that you have to clear. So much programming against that we have to get through in order to even be fully here and fully present. So this is a lot of like, and I'm sure that you find in your work also, it's just clearing like past lives, yeah. timelines, it's so, yes. it's so much. Um, so we really have to have a lot of patience and understanding and like love for ourselves, you know, like being in this physical embodiment. Um, so yeah, it's, it's recommended the three sessions so that you're clearing, you have a, a good opportunity to clear deeper and deeper. So like the first session, I always address um, people's liver meridian because that's a very, you hold and store emotions and feelings like um, anger, whether it's anger or repressed anger, sadness. I can treat emotions. Like if you told me you've got um, an emotion that you're dealing with, say it's anger. And I would immediately know, okay, should they really need to address the liver meridian? So this is also in the consultation, I can begin to understand where I'm gonna approach the medicine. Um, and then the second and third sessions, I approach combo from a, like a traditional Chinese medicine standpoint. Um, acupuncture, acupressure, I even like work in the ear. Okay. Um, so then the second and third sessions are a lot more spot treated. And then we're also getting deeper into the emotions because things will, you know, things are going to start surfacing as you dig and dig and clear.
clear and release and clear and release. So it's also energetically in the second and third sessions, it's deeper clearing, deeper energy work. Um, and then people are then, you know, they're open if they want to choose to do a, a Chunga session. So this will help Chunga really helps to, to meet your, your higher self. Mm -hmm. um, also clear energetic traumas or physical mm -hmm. traumas. It's really interesting. I had so weird. I've, no, I've almost never even heard this. Mm -hmm. So with the Chunga, I was having, I've had four people tell me not the exact, almost the exact same journey. Of course, they lived through different things. But the similarity was that they were all um, abused in childhood. And the medicine took them back through this journey. It's like a soul retrieval. Took them back through their old house and went through all the rooms. And the medicine was like comforting them and, t and like giving them this sense of peace. Wow. It's okay. It's all okay. Like just soothing it over. And the person came back and said that it was like they had a healing in it. it Wow. wow, that is so powerful, Chandra. Now, I'm, I'm, um, how does the lunar cycle, how does it affect? Can you describe for us what the lunar cycle has to do with what, like you said, it, it has to be done through that cycle? So because we're, we're what, 75% water? Yes, yeah. <laughs> 75, 80%. Water beings, basically. Yes. <laughs> and so is, so is Combo, lives in the water. And we right. are... We're like our body because we're so much water. The moon is is affecting our emotions. The way that things water has consciousness. The way that things get stored yeah. in the in the water, then in your cellular memory and makeup. So it's very um, important to sort of clear. You know, we're, we're we we work on either energies of like with the full moon or on the um, on the new moon. So okay. Clearing and releasing, releasing things. So it's best to do this so that you're sort of in a cyclical mm -hmm. time, time frame also. Okay. Um, so it's, um, and people can also, they can also do it back to back. I just got back from a weekend in Atlanta and mm -hmm. my sisters did back to back every day, one every day. And they had amazing results. It's more intense, yes. but you know, if they can do it, they're young girls. They're like in their 20s. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so powerful. What got you into this idea of, or how were you connect? How were you connected to doing? Because again, you're you're helping from this very esoteric space. So what what got you inclined into doing it from that place? I I never I actually never thought that I would be serving medicine. I, I came to the medicine mm -hmm. through my own healing. Like I met my oh. twin flame eight years ago and I was, yeah, it was really, it just brought everything up. So I dove straight into the medicine and really working on addressing all those things for me that came up of like my insecurities, like male, you know, like daddy wounds and issues. So all of that. And I was really addressing all those things with the medicine and when I got back to London, because I was living in London at that time, um, I entered into a relationship and he's Colombian and he, his taita, he was working with medicine and his taita said, take the medicine to London, people will come, they will, they will need it. So we held ayahuasca ceremonies, very quietly, small little groups in our, in our flat in London. Mm -hmm. And so I'll, I guess I'll share the journey. <laughs> so it's like the that'd be spirits, beautiful. Yes, the spirits have been like were sh were showing me that it's like you know. So I was always in a partnership, and the medicine was communicating to that partner where it was just like, here's the teaching, here's the learning, here's the offering. Like it'll be of service, and I was like, no, 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 I'm not ready. No, this isn't my job. <laughs> right. Wow. And so it happened then also with um, the spirit of Changa. I learned to meet Changa from an ex-boyfriend. Um, and then also recently, my previous ex-partner, we were working with Wachuma together. I did the Wachuma training with him. Um, and with Combo, so I met my Combo teacher in London. And I never, I never ever thought that I would 
the serving combo because I never had a, a really nice experience with combo. Mm -hmm. You know, you think like you're purging, you're, you're going yeah. through more difficult stuff. Most yes. of the time, it's challenging for people. But my experience with my teacher, he applied combo for me the first time, and I was like, oh, whoa. Like, I actually enjoyed that. That was, that was, sure, it can be challenging, but I felt this huge expansion afterwards. And right. I was like, there's something more to this. Mm -hmm. So then I, I did my training with him, and now actually I'm leaving in two weeks to go and do more combo training with my teacher's teacher. And he's like, he's the one that created this whole approach of, of approaching the medicine with traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a journey! Yeah, it has been for sure. <laughs> because a lot of times people will ask us questions, you know, what it is that called us to do the kind of work that we do and again my profession was a lot more traditional family therapy is where i started until i decided that therapy or diagnosing people was not the thing to do i hated labeling and the labels they just kept people in a box yeah. and so helping them find more esoteric avenues so introducing them to crystals and doing meditation is because the psychology again it's it's a great it's a wonderful tool and of course you get to understand people's thoughts their emotions and and all of that but there needed to be more because we're not just our thoughts and we're not just our emotions yeah so i'm fascinated by by what you do shandra i think that that it's something very beautiful and magical for people to heal and in a, like you said there's things that we heal that we don't even know is still bothering us or that we're carrying inside and we don't even know. So what has been one of your ahas in the, in, in the people that you have treated? Give me, I mean, you don't have to obviously name their names or anything, but give me something that you have helped somebody go through or, or, or heal from that has really left you with a big aha. Mm. I'm sure you have I, several. I, for me, like I feel... I feel so, so grateful and so honored to just be, I'm sure you feel it also, you know, when you're holding that space yeah. for somebody, it feels a bit like being a doula, yeah. you know, like really holding somebody in their, in their vulnerability to be able to yeah. release traumas and, and pain and suffering. And it's like, I've, I've been there myself and I know how, how hard and challenging it can be. And so when people come to me, Who've had, who've, who are working through similar issues that have already gone through and have had the learning and experience. And somehow my soul has always told me like, nope, you have to go through it in a very grounded, practical way in mm. order to be able to, to know how, how, mm. what it feels like, where it, where it sits in the body, how, like what kind of other energies you attract and all the dynamics and maybe drama that plays out with it. Yeah. So that I can really know to, to be of service and for me I would have to say that like the, se the sexual abuse that I went through as a child mm -hmm. when I'm able to hold that space for, for women and to see that like and not even doing you know like super deep in-depth um, like sessions but just with combo and energy alone and this and holding a safe nurturing space is enough for women to do their own work on themselves and the work get done it, it gets done and it gets raised and uplifted and then this new energy comes in and they're empowered like they're they're fully in their body they feel safe it's like to me it's it's mind-blowing sometimes and it always it always brings me to tears and for me it's like yes this is why I chose it on a soul level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful, Chandra. Um, thank you again for sharing that because obviously it's something that is so, um, is so powerful and close to your heart and going through that experience and sharing from this place of vulnerability. Um, obviously, I can tell that what you do is, is heartfelt and it's, it's magical. And you're right, so many times... We've got to bring what we do or what we know how to do. I mean, we've got to ground it, right? Because for me, it was um, being in this uh, a very abusive relationship for so many years. Um, he was my my only my only partner, really, my home my my life partner. 
And when I, again, through the physical abuse, the way that we do that out of body and how long I was out of my physical body and I'm a, mother, I'm a mother of four, so it was just, my role was to make sure that I could be grounded or stay grounded for my four kids and my very busy psychology practice of 50 to 55 clients a week. But when I was finally coming to the space that I'm ready to do more, and I had to actually come into my physical body and begin the healing process of my physical body because I had, I had abandoned it for so long because I didn't want to deal with having to make the decision of leaving this person that I was so scared of. And so the fact that when you're talking about this, it's so empowering because how many of us, like you said, have been sexually, physically even the emotional and mental abuse, we, we've got to separate from it in order to stay here. But eventually we've got to come back to, to the space so that we can heal it. And, and yeah, well, like I really admire you and your work and, and what you're doing because I can see the benefit of being able to do that in such a short period of time so that it's not years of processing and trying to make excuses as to why that person did that or even blaming ourselves i know for me a lot of it was i caused this how could i i knew he was jealous how could i make him jealous again like i, I should have known better and so thank you so much for holding that space um actually for me talking about this is not something that i have really shared um, with many people and definitely not in media this way so Thank you, because I, I know that for me, it was years of healing. I mean, I was with this person 37 years, so it's, it's a lifetime. Yeah. And yeah. for you to be able to help somebody in such a short period of time with such intensity, I mean, it's magical. It's beyond beautiful. So thank you so much for that. Um, I would love for, um, thank you. Thank you, to share. On and really honor the journey that you've been through and to also be able to help empower other women so that you know we can rise together thank you yes yes we are definitely rising together for sure um so can you um if you're gonna leave our audience with with a message that they're gonna remember chandra higher said this what message would you like to leave them with today I suppose it could be like the thread of, of what we've discussed, that if you are faced with a challenge in your life, mm -hmm. I would like you, I would, I would like to encourage you to stop and breathe for a minute mm -hmm. and feel like this, why is this happening? It's not happening to you. Yes. It's happening for you. And it may look really chaotic at first and it may hurt and it may break you open so that there's more light that can shine through. Yeah. Embrace it because I promise you it, if you if you are able to alchemize it and go through that transformation, you will like your evolution is going to go from here to here and you turn it into a gift. You turn every challenge. And this is the most powerful tool that you can ever have in, in your toolbox. You know, like knowing who you are and that you can get through any challenge and that you are actually gonna turn it into something that serves you. Not yeah. something that, you know, helps you to, to play into your, your victimization or, oh, I can't do this because I'm not good enough. No. You're like, you flip it and that's when it becomes the greatest gift Yes, it's because of you and, and the way that you have, have worked through it. So, so powerful. I, I know that everyone out there can, can do it and it's, you know, if anybody ever needs any help, I'm here. Yes. I am very busy, but we can always try <laughs> and schedule a, a, a consultation or some work together. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chandra. I feel, again, beautiful gift today of having you on the show, of being able to meet you and share with you and, and hear the magic of what it is that you're doing for humanity as a star seed. Thank you so much for being on the Lightworker series. Thank you all for, for being here with us today. We will be sharing Chandra's bio, 
um, some information, how you can reach her, how you can connect with her, how can you do work, how you can do work with her. So again, thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Thank you, Chandra. What a gift thank you. Uh, thank you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.